So what's up fellow journeyers? It is great to be back in Tennessee after driving and driving and driving and driving and driving. <laughs> the kids did awesome, Marissa did awesome. I don't know, like four days, do a thousand miles, something like that, so. Look, girl. A bee came in while Donna's house. Oh no. So Donna's got her cabin probably. The bee scared me. I dropped my markers. Oh, the bee scared you and you dropped your markers. <laughs> Probably about 90% done. The big thing for us is uh, the electrical's done and we've still got to dig another run for our 50 amp that's gonna go up here for the RV. It's not as bad as it looks. It's just some weeds, a lot of random leaves, and then this gaping spot where we have to figure out how we're gonna get the fifth wheel in here. So I have not figured that out yet. We didn't wanna even try to park the fifth wheel over here yet because if we're gonna dig that ditch, the fifth wheel would probably be in the way park back here and so we get Verizon signal here we can use our hot spot but it's a little weak so we're doing what we've done on every RV we've had we're putting in the Wii boost now what a Wii boost won't do first of all it doesn't magically create signal out of nothing so if there's no signal zip not if you're in Yellowstone or whatever underwater out of wherever you're at if there's no signal like it's not gonna give you signal but if your signal is weak or if it's 3g or you know, if you work from the road, it's a big deal. It could be the difference between 3G and like 4G with one bar or two bars. It could be the difference between 4G with one bar with like half a meg down versus 4G with like two megs down or something. I mean, the difference between checking your email and like being able to do like a video call. The difference between having a Wii Boost versus not having a Wii Boost, it's worth it. Because it's enough to make you think about it. I mean, 500, 600 bucks, I mean, that's enough to make you think about it. Um, but we think about it and we like it. So we're putting one in. So I've already mounted the antenna to the bracket. All right, antenna's up, wire is temporarily ran through the window over here. Just enough for us to test this out. Power this on. So this, this is the internal antenna, and that was the external antenna I just put up. Let's see what kind of boost we're getting here. So the internal antenna is supposed to reach, I think 10 feet. Now this one isn't gonna reach 10 feet for us because we're gonna have it inside this cabinet, but again, it's gonna connect to the hotspot, which is within two inches. So that should be fine. So we're gonna try some speed tests right next to the antenna first. So let me do two of these. First test. So 16 down, three up. Let's try it again. 25 down, 2.5 up. So we'll take the lower of the two. Say 16 down, two and a half up. That's what we're getting next to the antenna. So let me go somewhere with plenty of interference. Not next to any of the gear. We're we'll run some speed tests in here. So three down, three up on the first one. And then five down, three up on the second one. So almost three times as much on the download speed. The upload's right around the same, but get three times as much on the download. So you take hey. all these shapes and hey. you, you fill them in and make animals and yeah. pictures? Yeah. So we're starting to get our routine down a little bit with Hensley schooling. So yeah. we've learned that what works best is when JJ takes his first nap of the day, we do our schooling during JJ's nap time so Mommy and Hensley get special time together. Isn't that yeah. fun? Yeah. So I definitely never saw myself homeschooling I didn't know that that was something that I would ever do or be interested in it's funny how life takes you in directions that you never you never saw it going so never say never that is something I have I have learned because I never saw us hitting the road and living in an RV either but here we are I have moments of being really overwhelmed with homeschooling because it, it can be just something new and different. And I think as a parent, you want to do what's best for your child. Um, but I think this homeschooling with us and being on the road has been so good for Hensley. One of the most common 
curriculums that kept coming up was the good and the beautiful. I had so many recommendations from people saying, hey, you need to check this out. I really love it. So that's what we decided to go to go with. We've been using it a couple months now and I totally agree. I love this curriculum. Hensley's very artistic. They incorporate art and yesterday one of the lessons was read this short story and we read a short story together and they talked about a family walking on a road and pointing out what was beautiful and then so we went and we did that and we went and we walked down a road and we pointed out all the things in nature that was beautiful so she really liked that that was something to look forward to for her knowing that she when she finished her lesson we were going to go out and explore nature and one of my favorite parts about the curriculum is that it is faith-based but not geared towards any kind of certain faith but it's more about teaching your kids to be good people so it talks about kindness and thankfulness and just all the characteristics that we definitely want to pass on to our children that I think is really important for for them to be exposed to especially at such a young age to be talking about what's what makes her feel thankful and what she's thankful for and how she can be kind to other people so I really love that that's also incorporated into um into our schoolwork. Hensley hey what's showing up here in a minute? The truck. What truck? What's on the truck? What? Let's see if any of you guys can guess what this wood might be for. Yeah, treehouse. So maybe this whole home base spot is just me letting my inner kid out and building things maybe that I think are cool as a kid. But um, Hensley seems to love it. Uh, this will not happen in this video, but uh, we did get the wood delivered at least. That is the tree we're gonna be building on. I definitely don't have all the plans figured out, but I do know I want a zip line coming off of it. Probably a rope ladder involved, a slide, some other stuff, but we'll see. And yeah, I don't have a clue what I'm doing. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't want to say how I'm just winging it. Like I actually have a plan drawn out and bought everything, I've, but I've never built anything like this before. So we're gonna see how that goes. But really the potential disaster that I'm dreading and I've been dreading since we sold the Airstream, honestly, is getting this fifth wheel around here and into this spot. I've walked it off. I think it can go. Technically, since six feet of the fifth wheel hangs over the truck bed and the airstream counting the sway hitch was technically like 32, 33 feet. I mean, we're, we're only a net of maybe like, I don't know, three to four feet longer, but this just looks huge. <laughs> I mean, I've walked it off. I've cleared some trees. I feel like I've done everything I can do to prep it the way it is. And we're just gonna see what happens. Um, Cause if it doesn't fit, we'll pull it right back into where it's at. And, um, figure something I mean worst case we can get it in here worst case I can clear out some of these trees and we'll just do a straight shot in but one of the main goals of doing all this was to save as many trees as possible to do things like the treehouse and to do things like dangling lights from the trees and you know we just we love the feeling of being back in here oh and I don't know if you saw this behind me too because this is awesome so we got our electrical box installed too so now we got 50 amps sitting here waiting for us um, so everything's just screaming for us to get over here the deck the box everything so we need to just try to get over here. I gotta take the chalks out, but other than that, we're packed up, ready to roll. What are the odds we're doing this? <laughs> I hope 100%. Oh, that's very, that's very optimistic. <laughs> um, I think if I had like four strong guys and we can move the deck as needed, I would feel better about this. But we have one not very strong guy, unfortunately. So the plan is I'm gonna go turn around, I guess we'll see what happens. Well, that was the hard part. Probably shouldn't say that, should I? Then something goes really wrong after that. <laughs> So the things we're watching out for, I'm gonna say it was way easier than the Airstream, like at least, because we had the whole thing with the van getting stuck and all that too. So the cool thing is I think, we'll see, I might be able to let the steps down once it slips down and have the awning over the deck, which is what we want. And then uh, you gotta watch out for all these slides. These back two aren't a problem. The front one, 
Oh, maybe I cleared that tree. I thought I was gonna. You know what? I think that'll come out too. Wow. All right. Oh, that's awesome. I think that's perfect. Let's start getting this thing set up. I'm gonna say this came out pretty well. I do wish we could have got all the steps out. I don't know yet what I'm gonna do. I wonder if it'd be weird to put something on that. Or the other option is maybe, if these can be taken off, just take off that last step. Or the third option, just keep the steps folded up and I have some custom steps that I put here every time. But we have options. I think I can definitely get the truck out of here okay. Oh man, this short bed is a sweet. That was easy. <laughs> Part of the decision about getting the mega cab short bed was when, um, like we tried to get the Airstream out of here. My dad got it out of here with his four wheel drive short bed Dodge, which wasn't a mega, mega cab, just regular single rear wheel. But I was like, man, that's nice. Cause I don't, even just the turn I just made with a long bed, that'd be almost two feet longer. It'd been tough. What are you guys doing? <laughs> Playing in leaves. What? <laughs> Plenty of leaves. JJ, look at you. The RV is ready. If you want to go in it, you can go in. Yay! There you go. Go, JJ, go. Whee! This is the best moment ever. <laughs> and you may have noticed as well when I was moving the RV, this uh, pole. So this is a 24 foot pole. That was technically like a painter's pole. Um, just got it on Amazon. I'll put a link to it in our gear page and everything. But, but at the top of the pole, um, I've replaced the omnidirectional antenna with, um, this is like a, uh, this is a Yagi antenna. This is also made by Wilson, which is the company that makes the Weeboos. So I went with this over the omnidirectional, which the Yagi, like you have to point it straight at the towers, which sounds like an absolute pain, which is why I didn't buy it to start with. But since I can now raise it up 20 feet, and I've also heard, even if you don't point exactly where the tower's at, it could still do a pretty good job of picking them up. So I, it's kind of, an, I'm gonna experiment with it a little bit. We were into it. We were getting all this Weeboo stuff set up. So you know what? I'm gonna go and get, get a directional. Um, I've still got the Omni directional if I decide to put that back on. But I'm, I'm gonna give this one a go because I'm curious how far it can reach, what it can pick up, all that kind of stuff. Pretty pumped to try it out. Yeah, if you, if you can imagine, this is about, I don't know, 10 feet maybe? <laughs> that thing's gonna go another 14 feet. So it could really get pretty high in the air. Could probably put a GoPro on top of that thing. That'd be pretty cool. So in addition to the Yagi antenna outside and the pole and all that deal, um, this is kind of how we set up things inside. The actual WeBoost is up top, but other than that, for the most part we keep our electronics in this cabinet on this lower level. And I don't think I've ever shown this, definitely not in the fifth wheel, but some of this gear I've never shown it to anybody really. So, uh, but it's all in this cabinet. Uh, so if you thought I was a geek before, you're really gonna think I'm a geek now. I'm pretty big into magnets and Velcro and zip ties now. So uh, did you know they make zip ties that are reusable? Yeah, so these are all magnets. Magnet, 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 magnet. I've got magnets all over the place. And then the lower level, a little bit more of a mess, but this is the WeBoost antenna that's coming in. Uh, this is our hot spot that is like literally hugging the WeBoost antenna. So it comes from the outside antenna to the WeBoost itself, down through the cabinet to the internal antenna. That wireless signal makes it to the hotspot. It is hardwired from the hotspot from Verizon into the router. Now you can just get by with just the hotspot. A lot of people have asked, like, what do I do for internet in an RV? Like, really, that's it. I mean, you can use your phone, use it as a hotspot, which isn't really ideal, but you could at least just buy a hotspot, you know, something like this, and then, you know, you can have internet off that. Uh, but even my watch, like, I've got it attached to the wall, so if I need to charge it, I can just attach it up here like that and it'll start you know charging this is ubiquity nanostation m2 basically what this does is if i need it i don't use it a lot really is i can take this and point it to a wi-fi signal say an rv park or someone's house if i'm staying in a driveway or something like that and it will grab that signal bring it in and then i can run it from that over to the router that way so definitely some technical stuff in this video but essentially we're just kind of showing you guys like this is how we live i mean it's different i mean most of you probably if you live in a house did not have to cram your RV into an awkward site. Uh, you don't have to worry about a wee boost. Um, you may be homeschooling. Probably definitely don't have a cabinet that's full of like magnets and Velcro and everything else nerdy <laughs> in the world. Did you know you married a nerd? Oh yeah, I figured that out pretty quick. Did you know? <laughs> did you know they make zip ties? You know what a zip tie? Yeah, what a zip okay. tie. Is. <laughs> Just checking. Ever since you told I'm me, I'm a nerd too. Sometimes. Ever since you told me you did not know about Back to the Future and about. In the I, DeLorean. Didn't, I just anyways. didn't know it was a real car. Okay, anyways, <laughs> did you know they make them where they're reusable? 
So usually you do a zip tie. I like did not know they had so it's... reusable ones. <laughs> Mind blown. Yeah. Mind blown. Essentially, living in an RV has has its differences, but we still have to do life. Mm -hmm. So even though we travel and we get to do lots of uh, adventurous things, we still have work. We still have schooling. We still have like projects we have to catch up on. So it's life. It's just a little bit different. So I hope this has been helpful for you guys. Um, I'm gonna try to links to everything I can. Uh, Lessjunkmorejourney.com slash gear. One thing I have a hard time linking to and may or may not be able to link to is like the cell phone plans and things like that. For that, I would highly recommend checking out rvmobileinternet.com. Chris and Cherie eat, drink, and sleep this stuff. Eat, Check. drink, and sleep. You can do that, can't you? <laughs> I, breathe. Breathe. Is that a good one? <laughs> they breathe this stuff. They're awesome. They know their stuff. <laughs> but, I just never heard that. Hey, term. hey. Well, we are going to wrap things up. JJ's calling. JJ's calling. <laughs> <laughs> Until next time, we will catch you guys later.